All right, normally Mr. Robinson over here starts, but he's being weird today, so I have to use real names because unfortunately the fake name I came up with is shared by a gentleman here, so I am Trey Cannon here, not Bruce Robinson anymore. This is Dwayne Robinson. This is Mr. Bruce Brad and Mr. Fred Brad. Uh, okay, introductions are over now. Introductions are over, now let's get to it, let's get to it. Now, we told you that last time that the next episode we did will be following up on the previous episode we did, which got Aunt Rhonda coming after us. Yeah, well, it's getting quite a bit of buzz, and um, we, we hope to do a series not only having uh, entrepreneurs that are going to be potentially affected by the sugar tax, but also to uh, hopefully have officials from the Health Council and um, the Ministry of Health to stop in and give us that bit of feedback. If they're not scared to talk about like they normally are. So we're really glad to have uh, Mr. Bruce Barrett. Yes. And Mr. Fred Barrett. That's right. And I didn't even really know it was going to be a brother thing. I love brother things. I told you it was going to be a brother yeah. thing. Yeah, so I'm glad you guys showed up. Okay. Thank you for coming. <laughs> so who's the, who's the older brother? Me. Okay. What bearing does that have on our discussion? I was just curious because I know he's got a much younger brother, so... Okay, all right. So just kicking in to the sugar tax now. The prices are steep, and you guys have a... The prices or the proposed duty rates? Well, the proposed duty rates. There we go. Good. It's yeah. steep, yeah. There. And you guys are already paying a duty rate of 35% for imports, right? On. Yeah. On service. On service. Whether it's got sugar in it or not. The three triggers in the tariff for 35% duty is, is the beverage carbonated, is it sweetened, and does it have flavor? So, Coca-Cola, carbonated, sweetened, yes, and flavored. Diet Coke, no calories, no sugar, but it's sweetened with well, a non-nutritive sweetener. It is carbonated, it is flavored, and it's sweet. So as it stands now, sodas and diet sodas, some with calories, some with no calories, are all taxed at 35% customs duty. Yes. But as per this, it's going to be 35% of the So that people know this, the okay. sugar tax consultation document. Sugar tax consultation document. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Your proposal is to more than double that to 75. Or 150 or if 150. they need it necessary. What it also wants to do is increase the duty on iced teas and virtually every other beverage out there except water and milk. And on 100% fruit juice, am I correct? And they're, they're, they're yes. asking input on that, 100% fruit juice, which is at 5% now. Right. But everything, like an, an iced tea is taxed at 15%. Right They now. want to change that to 75. That's a five times increase in the duty on a product. So just to describe... To just you. because, and, and it, it can have, often has less sugar than 100% orange juice does. Well, just to describe to the layman's Folks, you know, who aren't really familiar with, you know, the, the, the import tax and stuff like that, duty. How exactly will this bring. damage your company? Like, what is the projected damage that could be caused by this sugar tax? There is no projected damage because you can't project the, the, the impact, the economic impact. If, if the tax does what government intends it to do mm. and decrease the sales of sugary sweetened beverages, then we're going to sell less beverages, which means we have we need fewer people to, to, to do the delivery, and jobs will be lost. Yeah. Quite well, simply. Anything that puts people's jobs <laughs> in jeopardy, you're automatically against. Because uh, it, it's... And it's not just drinks. They're candies. Yeah. And they've got lots of loopholes as well. But The, the candy list is very confusing because it says that caramel, caramels will be on um, tax, some yogurt covered raisins will get taxed yeah. and nougat will get taxed, but what about chocolate that's like chocolate covered mm -hmm. caramels or what, what not? You, you, you have to pull out the two inch thick customs tariff exactly. to figure this stuff out. Exactly. Yeah, but most people don't want to even think of oh, that. Exactly. Yeah, but that's, remember. This description is just an example. Where's the Snickers bar? I pulled up the, the I pulled out our, our copy of the customs duty before coming here. And the tariff code that they quote, 1704.909, is called other. That's oddly specific. <laughs> um, yeah. 
Chapter 17 is for confectionery. confectionery. 17 of, and then there's other very, they broke it down because it's an international harmonized tariff. They use the same categories around the world for basic things, and then local, local governments can add subcategories as they want. So this is, there isn't a tariff code for marshmallows. It, marshmallows go under that code, but that code just says other. Confectionery is not stipulated, not specifically mentioned elsewhere. You but you have to, because you can't possibly have a code for everything that, that comes up. The, the way it works is, is if someone wants to bring in something to the island to sell it, it has to go through a series of steps. One of them is, is to take a sample of that product to customs and ask them to make a decision on what tariff band it falls under. So somebody at customs at some point has seen most every product that comes through and made the decision. Some things are easy to define, others are not. I'm assuming that's why yogurt colored, sorry, yogurt covered raisins and marshmallows are in other. Breakfast cereal, interestingly <clears throat> enough, is listed under the confectionery section of the tariff. Breakfast cereal currently has zero duty. Whether it's chocolate coated sugar bombs or all bran, it's the same duty. Regardless of the amount of sugar that's... There. Regardless of what it is. It, it could be baked cardboard, it, it, it could be whole wheat. It, it's all the place like baked cardboard. Exactly. It, it, it could be exactly. Cocoa Krispies, which is one of my favorites, but still. It's... Do they, it, do it, they it, like those? Oh, yeah. Oh. It's, it's Rice Krispies covered in chocolate. It's just a nice little thing to add, sprinkle in with the other stuff. Oh. Flavor to your cereal. But it's zero, zero duty. Yep. It's zero duty. Exactly. There's... Uh, Tariff 17 is confectionery. Tariff 18 is cocoa and chocolate products. It's a separate uh -huh. thing. So they're ignoring chocolates altogether. So uh, it's They specifically said we're not doing cocoa. But, but it says, yes, other no chocolate idea, currently no not being considered. There's a 25% duty rate on, on chocolate now, more or less. Really? Yeah. Okay, but it says here specifically in this tariff mm -hmm. heading that white chocolate yes. is, is... Apparently that's not cocoa. Ah. But every it, chocolate... This, I, don't, I don't make up the rules. This Snickers bar <laughs> has on it, it's 250 calories, which is 13% of the daily value based on a 2,000 calorie diet. So this one Snickers bar at 250 calories with sugars of 27 grams has cocoa, list of ingredient, milk chocolate, sugar, cocoa butter, chocolate, okay? Is this part of the sugar tax or is this not? More information needs to be shared because, as we mentioned earlier, 100% juice, 5% duty. This 10 ounce serving of orange juice has 29 grams of sugar. It's not added sugar because it's orange juice from concentrate and then vitamin C is added. So yes. But it's 29 grams of sugar. Are you taxing added sugar or sugar? Because people can switch their beverages and still not reduce the amount of sugar that they're taking in in their daily diet. That, that 10 ounce bottle of orange juice has how many grams of sugar? 29 grams of sugar. And that has 27? This has 27. 27. This 20 ounce bottle of vitamin water, which would be taxed at 75% duty under the proposed plan, has got a 16 grams of sugar in it. Half that. But it's more than that. So it also has vitamin yeah, added vitamin. This, this, this has got 100% of your vitamin C in it. This has got vitamin B6, vitamin C, B12, whatever pantothenic acid is, 100% and 25% of your vitamin A. That's bad because it's got sugar in it, and that's good because it's 100% it's juice. Why? There's, there's no rationale for it. Of course, this all assumes that it's sugar that's causing the problem in the first place. Yes, right? so based on the- Which it isn't. It's not, the more, the, more, the more I find out about this, the more my head hurts. It's well, just like space. <laughs> based on how the initiative was presented, the sugar tax is aimed at defeating diabetes or culling obesity, but Based on the facts and the questions that we were asking and the points you're raising, 
it doesn't seem like it would be very effective. And it's not effective. It hasn't been effective anywhere in the world. The, the Diabetes yeah. Association is, always points to Mexico as a success story. Yeah. They, right. they put their, their sugar tax in, in January of 2014. It was a soda tax. A soda tax. Not a sugar tax. tax a soda tax. It's just on soda. sodas. And it's a one peso per ounce. Anyway, whatever, it doesn't matter what it is. But they, it started in January of 2014, and the, the sales of the tax products did go down. Correct. But even now, there's been no change in obesity in the country. The, the average Mexican still consumes 3,000 calories a day. It's not from the sodas. It's not from the drinks. It's, they're eating too much food. That's right. And not exercising enough. And here in Bermuda, we are, Barrett's is the largest distributor of soft drinks. Our sales of soft drinks have declined by 50%. Our sales of sodas. Sodas. Sorry. Correct. Yes. Of sodas. <laughs> have declined by 50% over the last 20 years. We sell half as much soda now than we did 20 years ago. We sell more bottled water now than we did. Because it didn't exist 20 years, 20 years ago. ago. Nobody was drinking bottled water 20 years ago. At they the same now. time, Bermuda's obesity rates have continued to climb as sales of sodas have declined. So you, you can't really can't link obesity to drinking soda, because people in Bermuda have, have switched away from soda. Yep, and also being as there is no health initiative, period, with it, like no exercise, no, no uh, education really coming out for what foods actually cause diabetes type 1 and type 2. <clears throat> well, there have been. The health department's done a series of initiatives, um, and I attended a meeting uh, that was at the Hamilton Princess earlier this month in January, where they brought in a guest speaker uh, from overseas, Jane Deville Armand, is a, is a registered nurse and an expert on obesity, <coughs> specifically male obesity. And at the end of the, of the evening in the presentation, her presentation was, yes, you need to eat right, eat less fatty foods and 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 eat more fruit and vegetables. Yes, drink less sugary drinks, drink more water. Exercise, walk, do things to, to move. Don't lead a, a sedentary couch potato lifestyle. At the end of the whole evening, uh, as I tried Sterling, who is very high up in the health department, uh, said that the surveys that they have done shows that there has been a flattening in the trend of obesity and diabetes in Bermuda. Now, you know, I, I'm not sure what stats they're looking at. Or what the Diabetes Association has strong opinions. The health department did a big <coughs> survey in 2014, and that's cited throughout the sugar tax proposal as showing where the baseline is. The, the concern, one of the many concerns, that we have about the sugar tax is, is, is that if it's aimed at trying to curb, and that's what it says, the goal is to curb unwanted consumption of foods which contribute no nutritional value to our daily diets. You're saying, well, how do they encourage the consumption of healthy? They have been doing a series of things that better, the better plate initiative, um, more education on how to, to prepare and eat good food. Our contention is that's crucial. Education is absolutely crucial. People have already started to vote because of the 35% duty on soda. With their pocketbooks in their stomachs, they're drinking less soda. But the main gripe is, even though it's encouraging folks to really go out there and kind of get a better plate. What our biggest concern is, is that with the prices rising on these somewhat cheaper foods, you now do not have any subsidies or any decrease in prices for the foods that are really expensive, which is the healthy foods. Because, I mean, produce and fruits are like... Insane. Massive. But there's only 5% duty on those now. If, if, that was, if that were the goal, 
which seems to be an admirable goal, you, you want to reduce that to zero. Do the math. How much duty are you collecting on the tax of fruits and vegetables? You know how much the taxes you're, you're collecting on the, the bad stuff? You want to give that $50 million back. You add $50 million in, so what, what duty rate do you need to increase elsewhere? So government tax is neutral, and you're subsidizing the fruits. They haven't done that. They have offered that they're going to drop the duty <clears throat> on water, on water, which is currently 15%, and bring it down to zero. Um, the challenge in Bermuda is, is, is that the tax being imposed at the point of entry, not at the point of sale. In every other jurisdiction, whether it's Mexico or California or New York or Berkeley or wherever, it's a VAT or a sales tax when you go to buy the item. And that raises the price to you as the consumer. Here in Bermuda, we don't have that it's going to be an in increase in the tariff rate, which then makes the businesses that import those items have to decide, wow, do we pass this on by raising the case price of the product to the, the store, who will then logically pass it on to the consumer, or does the business hold it back and, and try and re retain employment and retain sales. So there's there's a, a challenge in the thinking that it's going to raise it up. Really, what worries me even more is bulk sugar is going to go up fine if you're going to expand this tax, but how does it help or how, how, how do they propose to help local producers, local bakeries, local ice cream people, local candy well, maybe that they're not worried about that. Maybe, I, maybe they that's, that's for the greater good. Flaw. We sacrifice the local producer. Well, it's a big flaw because a lot of these smaller businesses, a, a few small business owners, have personally come up to me like, Trey, like, what, what, what are we going to do with this? But yeah, but government is increasing the tax on sugar coming in. Yeah. So the local baker, when they buy their sugar, costs more. Yeah. So their their baked goods will cost more. They're not going to increase the duty on Pillsbury and Keebler cookies coming in. Because yeah, it's already pre-mixed. pre mixed is not getting... Yeah, yeah, but the sugar's still in there. It, it, that's what I'm saying. It's 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 what, what they're going to do is make local, local businesses, small businesses, in, non-competitive. But this is, the, yeah. this is the confusion I have as far as... Put them out of business and Mr. Keebler still makes all his money. Well, and, everybody, and you'll be able to go to the store and substitute. Prolane cookies are too expensive. I'll get Keebler's. Yeah, I still get my sugar future. and I don't pay the tax. This is the confusion that I have with the whole thing because it says in here that local made produce won't be taxed, but yeah. the stuff that you have to buy to make that local Correct. made produce will. So it's like, do bakers and candy makers and small shop owners get a 75% discount at the grocery store? Uh, that's the question that needs to be asked. Is there a special mechanism for them to get a rebate back from government on duty, which... Because they, they almost certainly don't import their own sugar. No. And we'll they, it comes in through a wholesaler and they go to wholesale. That's how we get our sugar. From the exactly. Local we buy it from them. So if we were going to get a rebate for local production, there's going to be some kind of form to be filled out. They've got to say, yes, we sold this to Barrett's. Yeah. And this is what costs... If, this is, Nightmare over it, paperwork, and six more people in the back office government got to be paid to make it all work. Mm. Mm. <laughs> but this is exactly what our underlying really big gripe with it is, is that we really don't have too much against the initiative and the hope and the plan of... Nobody's against producing obesity yeah. and getting a healthier Absolutely country. Absolutely yeah. nobody. But this ain't the way this to do it. This ain't the way to do it. Exactly. I, Increasing okay. taxes. Sorry, this is not the way to do it. Don't let me <laughs> lapse into <laughs> wrong grammar. Exactly. <laughs> totally destroy my image for the people I think who are going to watch this. But we, our main thing is that we just want to see, I mean, there is any consultation period, but we want to see more initiatives for protecting job loss and an actual... But if so you're going to do it, 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 should, it should at least make sense. Correct. And it doesn't make sense in its current thing. Vitamin water zero has all the vitamins of vitamin water, which is more of the vitamins than 1% orange juice, and no sugar. This has got much more vitamins than that. It, it's going to be taxed because it's not 100% juice. It doesn't make any sense. Either yeah. you've got to be logical about it and be fair, 
or don't, don't do it. it at all. Yeah, yeah. And, exactly. and the mechanism is the reason why. There's established tariff bands and there's a catch-all mm -hmm. that's in there. And it, at no point did those tariff bands make any allowance mm -hmm. for calorie content or sugar content. So Diet Coke, or give me the can, the black can, which is actually called Zero Sugar, Zero sugar is going to be taxed at the same as this. It currently is. So this is 35% duty, this is 35% duty. But no sugar. No sugar. So when this goes up by set to 75% duty, this, as it stands now, will go up along with it, even though this has no sugar. Even says it on the can. So, the name. so is it is it a sugar tax or what? Or is it a way just to line your coffers? Well, if it was a sugar tax, well, this would be up there too. Well, but it's not. It's there not. is one of the other things that is most concerning to anyone who takes the time to read the 20-page document. That the government will, how does it say, if government is committed to attribute a portion, my emphasis, a portion of the derived tax revenue towards health initiatives. A portion. How much of a portion? One percent is technically a portion. How long will this portion but be if, in effect? If it's actually a health initiative, why not all of it? I would hope that it would be all of it. It would make sense to me if, the, yeah. if the goal was to stop diabetes that it would be all of it. But that's the other thing. Monitoring and evaluating the tax. This is from item section 6, overview of the proposed sugar tax. From the actual document, I am making this up. The monitoring and evaluating of the tax need to compare import data one year after tax is implemented. So the measure of success according to this, is there will be a drop in imports of sugary items. Compare the cost of the items now with one year after the tax is implemented. No measure in here of, of success says anything about reduction of obesity, increased health. It's measuring simply, well, if the sales and imports of these items drop, we pat ourselves on the back and say it succeeded. How is less sales for anything considered a success? In what alternate well, universe? Well, you can know, well, make arguments for that, but it, if the purpose of this is it shouldn't be just to reduce sales of these products, it's to increase health. Correct. But this is, but this is the if the goal is to increase health, then your measurement of success should be is health improved. Exactly. But my question behind is, as you said, your soda sales have gone down 50% and your water sales have gone up. Right. But that's not considered a success, and... Sir, no one from government has come to talk to us. No one. No. Not one person from the government has spoken to you, no. we, we, we get to consult just as you do. Who and has spoken to you? Spoken to us? Other than us. We, we, we were invited to, what was that? A, a, well, the PLV delegates, delegates conference, conference invited us to come and speak on a panel about the proposed sugar tax okay. last year. 2000. But the concept of the tax. Yeah, it was. And it there was, were no details. Just yeah, at that point there were no details. Um, and the minister, uh, Kim Wilson was there, John White as the head of the Chamber of Commerce, Debbie Jones, head of, uh, or, or maybe not the head, but very big in the organization, Diabetes, Diabetes Association. And, and Mr. Kendall. And yes, Mr. Kendall, David Kendall from um, the hospitals board. But since they've put it forward earlier this month, no one has spoken to you. No. Not a oh no, sir, 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 sir. There was that talk, and oh, and the delegates asked very good questions. There was a Q and A, and all the rest of that business. No, no arguments. We we left, um, and then January the fourth, the press release, and the proposal came out. And the, did, you, did you know they're they're not consulting on whether or not there should be a sugar tax? No, no, no. That's the first thing they say. We're not asking no, for alternatives. No, no, no. They're we, just doing it. We've decided we're doing it. And our consultation is, are we the, doing it enough? The purpose of the consultation is to seek views on the detailed policy design rather than to seek views on alternate proposals. So, we have made up our mind. We are going to do this. So let me get this straight. They say. As not the, me. They. Not me. me. Um, as, as, as the leading company of, of drinks in the island, the government has not in any way 
contacted you as to how this is going to affect your business or how this is going to affect personnel. No, not as, the, as the largest distributor of the product singled out as being a primary target of this, yes. we had no, no consultation whatsoever. So we, and, and there's reams of documents that we could have shown them about Mexico and the states and all the effects of other things and how they don't work. They've, they've consulted with their contacts in the health world, the World Health Association and some other acronym I don't quite remember. Yeah. Pop. And and that's where that's what they've consulted with. They they've asked people who are going to give them that the answer they want. Yeah. And and this is what we want to do. Uh, that's, that's now the the that's government, what? as they say in here, in most jurisdictions it is a soda tax. In the case of Bermuda, they have broadened it to include other luxury items that add no value to the diet. Minus chocolate, because for some strange magical yeah. reason, most pocket pepper candy isn't being taxed. They, they've expanded it, to, they expanded it, but not entirely. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, <laughs> expanded to certain areas. And I looked into the one uh, in Mexico as well, and they actually did a lot to drop the price in fruit and vegetables as well. Mm -hmm. However, in this tax, the only thing that's really mentioned is water. Yes. So it's like, where you're looking at the cost of living, and, and we've, we've highlighted this very point. Mm -hmm. If these prices go up, you know, you have financial assistance that will be affected as well, mm -hmm. which means probably higher taxes for others. Well, the document says at least once, possibly twice, that it is not intended to disadvantage um, persons who are on low income. However, it's gonna make their groceries more expensive. The dilemma is this, everyone needs to eat several times a day, seven days a week. If you take the traditional three times a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, seven days a week. Well, if you're on a fixed income, the percentage of your income you spend on that food, three times a day, seven days a week, is a bigger percentage than the head of an exam company's percentage. So mm. it stands to reason, it's math, that an increase in a variety of foodstuffs prices are going to adversely affect the people who are least able to handle the increase in the prices. And groceries are already expensive. They are. Yeah, and especially healthy groceries. That's right. Anything organic is is at least what six ninety nine eight dollars up. If I didn't spend almost two hundred dollars on just some fruits and some vegetables, yeah. last time I went grocery shopping, and as somebody who has dealt with you know seeing folks and what they purchase on FA, it's a lot of these foods, a lot of these foods because they are the cheaper option, well, and you can feed a lot more people with less. Well, when you say these foods, remember, the key to obesity is calories in and exercise to burn it off. The, the Bermudian diet, you know, and I like peas and rice and mac and cheese and, and fried chicken and ribs and fried fish as much as anybody. I eat cassava pie every Christmas. I probably I like eat it every Easter. Pie. Sorry? Because I like fried chicken and cassava pie. Well, exactly. Yeah. The, the, the reality is, is, is that it's all the calories you take in and the exercise to burn it off. You need to have a balance. Nobody is advocating drinking sugary beverages three, five, six times a day. You do need to drink water. No arguments. No arguments whatsoever. Absolutely. And people are already doing that. I have yet to figure out what they define as a sugary beverage. In this 20-page document, they keep talking about SSBs. Is a sugary beverage strictly the ones in cans and bottles that are carbonated, or can it also be picnic drink that people make, or, or fruit punch, or, or at the coffee station where the guy has a 16-ounce coffee and takes five packets of sugar and then rips the top off and... Poor's men. Is that construed as a sugary beverage? I have no idea. That, that sugar would be taxed on the way in. Exactly. This, this, the step survey is, is one of the basis of this document, and I absolutely invite you to reach out to David Kendall, uh, the Director of Health. I said he's in the hospitals board before. Sorry. I, 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 that rolled off my tongue. He's the Director of Health for Continuity and Accuracy. 
But the step survey was done in 2014, and there's a lot of information that came out of that because they actually went out to hundreds of households and tested them and questioned them and used that as the baseline data. While they say in the preamble to the sugar tax that 50% of the population drink at least one sugary drink a day, their own stats show that 50% drink no sugary drinks at all. So, okay, there's the sugary drink portion. It talks about consumption of fruit and vegetables, but it doesn't talk about what else do they eat. And they did measure exercise. Everybody you talk to in the health world and the dietitian world is also, you got to get up and you got to get moving. You, you can't lay around. You can't just sit on the, on the couch all day or sit at your desk all day. So it's calories in, exercise mm -hmm. burn off. How can't we get everybody to do that? Education, education, not taxes. Well, that's what, um, that's what we said in the last video. We were, our idea was to, because the average gym membership is about what? $150 to $200? Mm -hmm. And don't forget that in the PLP's platform, they did say that they were going to put exercise machines into public spaces. That might be a good way to start. Uh, well, you have to make sure they don't get wet. But at what point does the conversation go from being serious to funny? Because I'm, I'm repressing all of my comedy <laughs> genes because I'm, I'm, I'm ready to leap into conversation like that, but no Bruce stays. You know, they, they, they gotta mix it in. Yeah, like. we, we kind of just sprinkle it over the top, you know what I mean? It's like it goes from Coke Zero to Coke, and it goes right back. So it's the same can. But there's no loss in taste, sir. It's the same taste. It's the same, same taste, but none of the sugar. sugar. None of the sugar. I heard that. I heard that. It's only yeah. sugar. It's a, oh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I that was a good jam. I know you can do a cutaway afterwards. You can do a close-up and edit that in. And you can edit this part out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's continue. Yes. Oh, yes. Continue. Okay. Our our whole thing was see if we can somehow get the gyms to be cheaper so that more people can go because I, I know this is an excuse. Well, okay. That's actually not an excuse for old people. But I hear from a lot of people. I would love to work out and eat healthy, but I can't afford it. You oh. don't need to go to a gym. I, you don't. A half no. hour walk every day. Absolutely. Half yeah. hour walk is just you just get started doing that, and and if you. An example I like to use, you go to Kentucky Fried Chicken, get their dinner box. That's, I looked it up on the website, I don't know, 1,200 calories, something like that. And the water. And you have a nice green salad with some vinaigrette dressing and a Coke. The calorie count is nowhere close. You know, you're, you're 1,500 calories against maybe 500. All other things being equal, who's going to put on weight? The person eating the fried chicken mm -hmm. dinner. But you're, this tax assumes the difference is the water and the Coke. And it's not. It's a lifestyle. The 140 calories in that Coke is not going to make any difference That's the to your time. To, to yeah. your He's talking about calorie calories. intake. It's then calorie intake. Activity. Exactly. Yeah. And that's exactly what uh, the Diabetes Association was saying. They, they were like, if you ate a burger and you got up and took a walk, you didn't just sit down, you would mm. mitigate your, your, mm. your weight gain. And you no know, one's talking about the bag of chips that decide you're watching TV. Mm -hmm. And Super Bowl's coming up. Gonna, how many bags of chips are going to be sucked back in turn that thing? Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's not being taxed. That's putting weight on, putting calories on. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a, obesity is a complex problem, and simple solutions are not going to work. Attempts at simple solutions. I have are big solutions that are going to work. <laughs> Especially solutions. It's a long process. Solutions and it's the, 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 um, the um, initiative in schools that's been. Well, oh yes, yeah. yeah, Marie Beach and the Healthy yeah. Schools Initiative. We haven't sold a, a sweetened soft drink or any soft drink in a school vending machine for 20 years. School vending machines only can carry plain, unflavored water or 100% fruit juice. So there's and the nutritionists and dietitians were even pressing, don't have an 11 ounce can of fruit juice because that's got a lot of sugar in it. Can you get a smaller one? They wanted portion control. With the, there's a limit 
to what we can physically eat. We don't make these things here. We don't produce any soft drinks here other than some fountain syrups. We got out of local production of soft drinks between 2009 and 2011. You know, so, so there will be... There's generations of children who've grown up without having a, a, a Coke at school. Exactly. It's not there. Therefore, they're not used to drinking it. And, and they, they, they grow up without that, that, the habit, the pattern of drinking. They're drinking other things. I vividly remember at the PLP Delegates Conference, one of the delegates standing up and saying, my son is 22 years old now. When he started preschool, the teachers told him from day one, no, don't drink juice drinks, don't drink sippy cup, don't drink, you know, drink boxes and, and all that. Drink water, drink water. And that message was consistent throughout primary school, middle school, and secondary school to where now, as she said, my son's 22 and he doesn't drink any of that stuff. He only drinks water. There are generations of kids coming along now who already know the benefits of drinking more water. I have no problem with people drinking more water. Our concern, you, keep, you said earlier on about the gripe, the gripe. Our concern is, is, is that diabetes is a complex problem. Taxes are not going to solve it. Certainly not taxes on a select group of foods that leave out a bunch of others that add extra calories into a person's diet. And absolutely looks on the surface of it to be disadvantaging local production. Bakers, ice cream, things like that. Because if the raw material, the, the sugar that they have to use to make it is imported, which it has to be, and the duty goes up on that, and they're still trying to make and bake and make things, yet imported cakes, cookies, ice cream, pie, pie filling, all the rest of that stuff, is not going to be subject to this tax. That really puts local production in a tough, tough place. And all the jobs in, in that sector. Well, we appreciate the amount of light that you shed on this subject, and I think it comes from a, a place of knowing personally and firsthand, which we could never quite reach yeah, as far as that. And we are really, really hoping that people really absorb what is being said, that it's not like a... Well, it's more than absorb. Contact the NP. Contact the NP. Go to, you know... PLP.pm. Yeah, www.plp.pm or OB. Get, get the email addresses, reach out to it, and participate in the public consultation phase of this. Because yeah. there's, there's several ways to deal with that. There's the one you guys can throw it up on the screen in the final edit. Where is it? Where is it? I'll, I'll, I'll get it for you. I'll get it from the pile of paper that's on the ground. Because he know? bought a pile of paper. They can't spare it today. Because he didn't make it easy. That's, that's the website. That's what you've got to type in to bring up their, their, their 13 responses. So that's, it, that's the online form. You can email your comments to health at gov.bm. You can write to David Kendall, who's the director of health. Not BHB. Yes, not BHB. <laughs> the director of health at the Continental Building on Church Street in Hamilton. But yeah, if you put up, you know, whether it's oh, fixed or there. scrolled, yeah. what the link is, because there are 13 questions that they specifically want feedback on that are contained within. That was on page 14, yes? Yes, I believe so. 14 or 15. There you go. Here's, here's another gripe that I have. How are you going to give us the questions to answer? Like, how do you say, oh, we're open to questions, but these are the questions that we're prepared to answer for you? Like, if that's not, a, if that's not loaded, I don't know what is. Hmm? That's not the first time you've seen those questions. No, it's not the first time he's seen them. Oh, okay. Oh, no. You're, you're, you're now looking at them in a new light. Yes. Given, given the way that Trey is talking about it. This is why this yeah. works unscripted. Yeah. <laughs> it's real, real time. But you, but you, you really need to look at the last pages where they have proposals for health programs. Yeah, I, I did uh, both. They're, they're considering 
uh, restricting the availability of sugar sweet drinks, so stores won't be able to stop them. See, this is the thing. My, my, my copy of this had to get restated a couple of times because I was reading it and taking notes, and it. it yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it's it, a mess. It lends itself to highlights and, and circles and stuff. Absolutely. What did you use? Yeah, like a Jackson Pollock. It's actually Pollock painted. Yeah. <laughs> this is all of it. Yeah. yeah, you should have yeah. seen it. Yeah. it it's got some very draconian plans in the offing to force people Dracon to drink water. Draconian, that is probably the best word I could use to describe this. Yep. That, that is, you sir, okay. you're all right. I didn't come up with the word, but that's it. No, but it, it, implement, <laughs> implementation? Love More it. for that. Love it. So, so should the government include these for taxes? Do respondents agree with the exclusion? Is 75% enough? That is the one that kills me. <laughs> You're asking people's opinion on whether an increase in duty to 75% is enough to dissuade people from buying it. How, how would you know? Well, how would you know? 150% duty on cars doesn't stop people buying cars. Well, this, this, is the, this is the analogy I made last time, um, last time we spoke on this. I was working at, um, I was working at Collector's Hill gas station when the cigarette tax went through. And say a pack of cigarettes, I, I don't remember the exact price, but a pack of cigarettes went from, let's say, $6 to $10. And I remember clocking in at 6 o'clock in the morning, went behind my cash register, and I'm like, maybe I don't need a fully stacked shelf with cig full of cigarettes today. Maybe we're not going to sell that much. Did they still fly out the shelves? Of course they did. The, the, the taxes on liquor go up every every year. But we still like to get Mm. It comes out, I know I was drinking, it just means you have to pay more for it. Yeah. Everyone... <laughs> it, this whole where will the money go from the sugar tax? If it goes Well, a portion of it will go to diabetes research. <laughs> <laughs> a portion. A portion. Exactly. And portion. the dimension of how much money they expect to raise by this, surely that's a simple calculation based on the customs information. It should be a simple calculation. Be calculation. Just find that there's, because there's, when you start talking about that, they even say inside here, which I find absolutely astounding, that they actually have no problem. 1.12. The goal is for less tax to be collected as less of the sugary items are imported. So if the goal is to take a portion of the money that you're going to gain from the sugar tax to support healthy initiatives, but you're also, the goal is for less tax to be collected as less sugary items are imported, then the money that you're using to support health initiatives will naturally decline, decline, and decline. As the country becomes more healthy, of course. Ostensibly. <laughs> Hopefully. Thank God Adibo's not being taxed, because I'm going to need one after all of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, <laughs> we, again, we appreciate the uh, insight, of course. If it's one burning, burning, burning thing that you would like to say to those viewing this, please say it right now. Well, there's two of us. Do we get a chance to talk about burning things, or has it got to be a collaborative? If, if, I would, oh, I no, by all means, if, whatever you want to give us, we'll take it. The, 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 the simple summary is this sugar tax is a bad idea, it won't work, and it's probably thought out. There's so many holes in it. It, it's not even a, a cohesive thing. I should type it on screen. Bad idea, won't work. If, if, if you accept the premise that increase that taxing these products and sugar will, will work, then you've got to tax them all. There are loopholes in here that are... That There's way too many loopholes. The, the imported cookies. It's just... You know, do it all or don't do it at all. Exactly. And in, in the end, it's not going to affect obesity because this isn't what's causing obesity. Nope. Exactly. There you go. Well, that's it. Any brand new things? No, sir. Oh, okay. no, no, no. I defer to my younger brother. We, oh. okay. Well, it's been this type of news. I would like to thank the Barrett's brothers for coming on and enlightening us and sharing a lot of useful and thought provocative in information. You know what I mean? Just real good information. Well, I'm Dutch Pyramid. I'm the other guy. And these are the Barrett brothers. That's right. Okay. Drink Coke Zero. It doesn't have sugar in it. Still being taxed, but it doesn't have sugar in it. There you go. That's how you cure diabetes right there. Silver bullet for everything. Everybody's going to lose 150 pawns and get healthy. Ah, uh, Jerry. Anchor. <laughs>